high or low meshes, uncap or cap your FPS, what gives you the most FPS and lowest input delay if you're on a low end PC? Well that is exactly what we're going to cover in this video, so with that said, let's jump right into it. Getting right into it guys, the first set of settings we'll be looking at is our display settings. Starting off on window mode, you want to make sure you have this set to full screen and not windowed or windowed full screen, as full screen will give you the best performance and lowest input delay possible. And then for resolution, you can go ahead and set this to 1920 by 1080 or if you'd prefer, you can actually go ahead and set up a stretch resolution. And while they may make the quality of your game suffer a bit, you will see an FPS boost on stretch resolutions because on a stretch resolution, your game doesn't need to render in as many pixels, therefore giving you an FPS boost. I cover exactly how to set up a stretch resolution in my competitive settings video, so if you'd like to know exactly how to configure a stretch resolution for yourself, go ahead and click the card in the top right of this video or click the link in the description and some good stretch resolutions to use are 1750 by 1920, 1680 by 1050 and there are just so many more to use. By using a stretch resolution like the ones you see on screen, you can give yourself up to a 45% FPS boost. So just pick and choose whichever resolution you'd like to use. Also, huge shout out to this guy for doing the in-game test and finding out exactly how much of an FPS boost you'd get by using different stretch resolutions. So be sure to check him out down below. And now for frame rate limit, you can either set this to match your monitor's refresh rate. So for example, if you're using a 240Hz monitor, you can cap your FPS at 240 in game. And if you're using a 144Hz monitor, cap it to 144FPS in game and so on and so forth. As I also mentioned in my competitive settings video, if you're using an Nvidia G-Sync graphics card with a G-Sync enabled monitor, you could benefit from capping your FPS a few frames below your normal refresh rate. So for example, if you're on a 144Hz monitor, cap your FPS to 141. And if you're on a 240Hz monitor, cap your FPS to 237. And if you're on a 360Hz monitor, cap your FPS to 357. Doing so could actually lower your input delay, so definitely give this a shot if you're on a low-end NVIDIA PC because squeezing as much performance out of your PC is exactly what we're trying to do. The next set of settings we'll be looking at is our graphics quality settings. If you're watching this video, you're probably on a low-end PC, so you could definitely benefit from lowering your 3D resolution from 100% to about 90-80% to or so. But be sure to not go too low or it will literally make your game look awful. Lowering it about 20% or so will present you with a slight quality decrease however you will see a slight fps boost then for our view distance and textures set these to both be on low for the most fps possible and then for our meshes i personally found that i got the best performance possible in lower input delay when using low meshes if you're on a low end pc definitely use low meshes well even if you choose to use high meshes it might not make your input delay too much higher but if you truly want the lowest input delay possible low meshes is what you want to use then for our advanced graphic settings you want vsync turned off show FPS turned on and then the best setting you can possibly use that's going to make the biggest difference in both your input delay and your FPS will be having performance mode beta turned on. You might not like how it looks at first but you'll quickly get used to it and it's going to make your game feel so much better especially for those of you who are on low end systems. And if you're using DX11 on a low end PC in chapter 3 I honestly don't know what you're doing. Then in our main settings you want to scroll all the way to the bottom and have all of your replay settings turned off unless you need them for content or something. Something. There was absolutely no need to have these turned on as they're only going to suck more FPS out of your system. So be sure to have all three of these turned off if you do not need them. And then the final group of settings we'll be taking a look at are the audio settings. Be sure to have sound quality on low because Fortnite even tells you that while having sound quality on high might make your game sound better, it will decrease your performance. Then for visualized sound effects, you can either choose to have this turned on or off. Recently, the setting has become a bit of a hot topic in the competitive scene on whether you should have it turned on or keep it off but I personally don't think it's going to make much of a difference in your input delay or FPS if you have the setting turned on or off. I used to use visualized sound effects for many seasons and for content reasons and because at the time it wasn't clear if it would affect your FPS or input delay, I did decide to turn it off. However, in chapter 3, I'm not sure how true the claims are of this setting affecting your input delay or decreasing your FPS, so just go ahead and turn the setting on if you'd like and if you personally feel like your game's performance is suffering, then just turn it right back off. And then for those of you who are curious, I am going to go ahead and scroll through all of my settings for you guys, so if you'd like to go ahead and copy them, just feel free to do so. But while we're here, I really appreciate all the support you guys have shown me lately. It truly does mean the world to me. And we also just hit 14,000 subscribers, so thank you all so much for that. And I hope you guys all enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please be sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe for more tips and tricks content in the future. And I hope you all have yourselves an amazing rest of your day, and I'll see you all in the next one.